So a lot of people out there that are using ground reaction forces to better understand the golf swing have begun talking about this thing called an impulse. And I think for many golfers, an impulse is a concept that hasn't really been talked a lot about in golf. However, I think by understanding what an impulse is, we can better understand how that impulse directly affects our golf swing and can lead to some problems down the road for even the most seasoned of player. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at what an impulse is, how it affects us, and more importantly, how we can better match an impulse to help us play the best golf we can play. So what is an impulse? That's something that we have to understand first because like I said, I think it's kind of a new idea for the golf industry at large. So when we talk about an impulse, what we're talking about is we're talking about the amount of force that we see above the zero threshold line. That's a very easy way to think of it. So if we look here at purple, we can see that on horizontal force, something very interesting is that this player starts making positive, so we go from zero to one, so we're making positive horizontal force for a very, very, very long amount of time. So the impulse would be anything that is above the zero line. That is all force that is being used and created. So it's happening though over a very, very long period of time. Now, when we go down here and look at the vertical force and we look at the spike here, so if we back this up just a little bit to where we go back to zero or 100% or in this case, we don't quite have that exact moment, but we see it starts here and then it only stays positive for a little bit of time and stops here. So the graph side to side is time and now we can see the magnitudes but now we're also looking at the impulses. So when we talk about these impulses, we can see that there's a pattern. Some of them happen over a longer period of time, and then some of them happen over a shorter period of time. But what we have to understand is that we want these forces generally to occur within a sequence and with the correct timing relative to the body. However, what most people fail to realize is that we have to manage these impulses and we have to make sure that the impulse that we're trying to create or the effort that we're trying to apply matches what we physically can do and still have some control with the golf club in our hands. So what we're gonna look at next is how do we match an impulse that's correct for you? Do we want something super spiky and dynamic or do we want something a little more drawn out that still creates a lot of force but happens a little bit slower? So I think an easy way to think of an impulse is to kind of think about jumping. And I know jumping gets equated to the golf swing quite a bit. And I'm not saying that there aren't similar qualities that both a jump and a golf swing share. However, we can't use a jump to describe a golf swing. So going back to just the idea of jumping, if we think about jumping and we go down and then we lift up off the ground, we can go a couple different ways. I can go down very fast and up very fast, or I can go down very slow and up very slow. So depending on the amount of force that I generate, I'm going to be able to use that force to create lift. So one way or another, we're still going to be able to jump as high as we can jump. However, one of those two, either the short and twitchy or the really slow and methodical is going to match my body type better. And we're gonna see that when I apply that technique and apply that impulse, I'm gonna create a higher jump than the opposite because one matches me versus another. So what we need to do is we need to understand this concept a little farther and now take it from a jumping context and put it into a golf context. So that's what we're gonna take a look at next. So one of the most common things that we tend to hear about in the golf swing is a concept called early extension. And early extension tends to be where we get the body lifting and moving towards the ball much too early in the transition and it causes to be, or it, tends to cause the arms to get stuck behind the body and then we have to do a lot with the wrist and the hands. So early extension tends to plague a lot of golfers. So one of the biggest reasons that's happening is because they are failing to match the correct impulse to them. So when you look at myself, I'm about 5'10 and 165 pounds, maybe a few more right now, but we're gonna look past that. But with me being 5'10 and 160, I tend to be a little more slender than a lot of other people. There's also people who tend to be a little shorter and a little thicker with their build and their chest and their pelvis width. 
So there's different types of people out there. However, for people who tend to be a little thinner and a little more kind of slender, what we tend to see is that a quicker impulse tends to help them create the most power. And the reason for that is because we don't have as much mass. Like I said, I'm only about 160 pounds. So the time that I need to apply my mass is going to need to be very quick to create a large force. So for me, I have to rely on some quickness to create some speed, while other people who tend to either be a little shorter or a little wider in terms of their chest and their pelvis, those type of people tend to need a little bit more time and they tend not to be quite as dynamic and twitchy. And the reason for that is because once again, they have more mass. So if they have more mass, they don't have to apply that mass as quickly to generate the same force as I would have to doing it very quickly. So that's where we start talking about matching impulse to the golfer. Now, when it comes to the golf swing and early extension, I think it's super, super important to understand that most people who fight early extension are people who are trying to apply the impulse much too dynamically and way too spiky. So what I mean by that is that we see a lot of golfers, they get set up to the golf ball and then they make this really quick backswing and now they gotta try to get the club back to the ball. It's a very quick tempo. So I think tempo tends to be a word that is used to describe what we're talking about with impulse. But the quicker we take the club back, the more effort we're gonna need or the more change in direction we're gonna need to turn the club back around. So we're really trying to use this body very quick to change direction. And as we said, we're using forces and torques to do that. So if you're somebody who has a thicker chest and the body isn't going to want to rotate as quickly, what we have to understand is we may need more time and transition to actually get the club to the ball with our impulse still active. We don't want to be seeing that we're unable to get the club back to the ball before we used all of that impulse. Because if I've used all of that impulse, what ends up happening is I tend to get moving up and away from the ground on my toes because I've already stood up and now I'm on my toes trying to generate speed, which is why we see a lot of people in that early extension because they've used up the impulse and now they're trying to still generate speed and get the club to the ball. So the really cool thing is that if you have access to force plates, then you can hop on here and you can measure how fast your impulse is and you can really get some definitive data about what's gonna work best for you. However, you can also go to the driving range and do some at-home experiments as well. And one of my favorite drills to have players do is a simple, good old traditional stop drill. So most golfers can't stand when we ask them to stop at the top of their golf swing and then hit the golf ball. And the reason that golfers really don't care for that is because it's difficult for them to fire this in the correct sequence without trying to use a massive impulse that they need to create prior to. So by doing a stop drill, we can find out by using a little bit of video, okay? So we're gonna video ourselves while we're doing the stop drill. We're gonna figure out how much I can stop it and then still hit a good shot. So we want to see how long we can hold it at the top and then hit a good golf shot. If you're somebody who feels like you're holding it for a very, very long time and can confirm that within the video, then you might need a longer impulse or a less dynamic impulse than somebody like myself who needs a little quicker one. If you're somebody who feels like you stop it at the top, but then look in the video and see that the club really never stops moving, then you might be somebody like me who actually does need that dynamic impulse. But by playing around with this, it's gonna be much easier to understand which impulse matches us. And now we can use that impulse to deliver the club with the appropriate amount of force and speed, which is gonna help every golfer hopefully hit bombs. So thanks so much for watching this video. Please be sure to subscribe. And if you have any interest in working with myself, you can find me by searching Michael Dutro on Skillist, and I'll be happy to talk to you about your golf swing there. So thanks again, and until next time, keep grinding.